Okay, we're taking a look at the uh, Tucson Search and Rescue webpage where they have some information about the ham radio tests here in town because the amateur radio is a big part of the search and rescue. Uh, that's where I ended up getting most of my information about the testing. So the uh, ham radio, if you're not familiar, is uh, some of the radio fre frequency spectrum that are set aside for amateurs or non-commercial operators. So uh, it's been around since really, really since radios were invented uh, in different forms. And modern day here, uh, there's three different levels. There's a technician, a general, and then a, a, another level. And uh, I'm going to be taking the test for the technician, the first entry level here tonight. So going from the uh, website, uh, we were able to get information that the tests are given once a month by volunteers and it's the first Thursday of the month and that's what we're that's what it is today so we're heading across town here I did my studying with some various online guides and uh, encouragement of encouragement of friends and uh, people online so uh, it should be pretty fun and uh, we'll try to document the uh, taking the test here we're using the uh, we're using the smartphones to direct us in with their GPS function. And we're basically heading to We're going to a YMCA that well at least I'm not familiar with here in town where they do the testing. So we'll walk you through the procedure that we found tonight. However, I suspect this will be similar in other areas. We got to the location, they sent us back to the classroom. Now there was a phone number on the website that we could have called to make an appointment. However, they also accept walk-ins. There was about six volunteers there, so we walked in, uh, we gave them the $15 to take the test. They give you the test, you sit down, you take the test right there. Uh, you bring it back up to the volunteers, they grade it, and then a couple of them double check it to make sure everything's good to go. Now you're either going to pass the test or you're going to fail. If you fail the test, you can pay another $15, take another version of the test right there, sit down, take it again, bring it back up, they're going to grade it. Now eventually you're going to pass the test. Now we happen to pass right away. We were pretty pleased. Now they offered us the chance to take the general level, the next level test right away. Now we hadn't studied for it, so we were a little apprehensive, but I'm not about to turn away something for free. So we did sit down and take that general test. I'm happy I did. I actually did a lot better than I would have thought. I only missed seven questions. So although I didn't pass, um, I'm definitely, you know, I'm, I'm certain I'll pass it next month after I've had a chance to study. Now the way I studied for this technical level was basically for the last maybe three weeks before I hit the sack I would run through a couple of the practice tests online and eventually I would find that there's a couple of questions I would miss consistently and I would just go study the theory behind those questions. So instead of trying to tackle the whole thing I took the test first to find out what my weak points were and then I'd do more research or, or find out the, the answers to those things that I kept missing. Eventually I knew the answers and uh, became pretty comfortable with most of the curriculum. Now, I highly encourage anybody who's interested in this to do it. I didn't spend a heck of a lot of time, uh, didn't spend a lot of investment as far as you know, brain power or effort into it. Uh, it's definitely a passable test. Um, there's literally 300 questions or something in the pool and the FCC has those available online so the questions that you practice in the practice tests are literally the exact same questions you're gonna get in the test for the license so definitely something that you can learn by just memorization or if you're again anywhere interested in the uh, science or the electronics behind it, um, it there's plenty of resources available online so I'm really looking forward to the opportunities this is going to open up as far as uh, emergency services and search and rescue type of stuff, as well as just an, another entertaining hobby that, because there's so many ham radio operators out there, I suspect it's not going to necessarily need to be a very expensive hobby. There's going to be lots of used equipment out there. So thanks to USN, ER Doc, and Tactical Gearhead for making it look so appealing. Really looking forward to it.